Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining for another session of Azure Power Lunch. Um, we are going to be recording this call, and our recording will be placed on our YouTube channel. So if you don't want to be recorded, you may want to drop off now. Okay. With that, happy Friday, everyone. Uh, today, we are going to talk about um, Azure deployment using GitHub Actions. So first of all, um, I'm going to talk a bit about GitHub Actions and then how we can do deployment and what are some of the things that it provides and uh, spend a little bit of time on comparing it with um, DevOps and you know, some of those things. So uh, with that, so first of all, what are GitHub's action? GitHub actions are basically event-based workflow which are fired when something happens in your GitHub repo, okay? So let's say that you have a GitHub a repo and you checked in some code, you push some code in, or somebody created a pull request, or these type of actions, when they happen, this, is, will, uh, this will cause uh, a workflow to be fired, which will be executed, and all of it, uh, there is no visual designer. All of it is in YAML. And basically what you do is you take uh, these GitHub actions and you can use them to do build, test, and uh, you know, and deploy your code. Because in the end, as these actions are executing, you can do anything. So one of the things is build your code, test your code, and deploy it. Okay. So that's very simply, that's what they are. Um, you know, GitHub action. So, um, so let's move forward. Let's look at what are the some of the key components. So, first of all, the key part is a workflow. Workflow has a name. Workflow um, is basically that's what executed. Either you can, uh, it can also be uh, uh, scheduled as well. So you can run it on a certain interval. Let's say you wanna. Um, get some information from your repo. You can run that workflow um, of, uh, at a certain fixed interval. You can do that, or you can base it on trigger. Okay. Second part is event. What triggers the workflow? It can be a push. It can be a pull request, and there are a number of uh, events uh, other than that that can trigger a workflow. So there. Um, so basically, you can have a workflow that can be triggered based on multiple events when they happen, okay? Jobs, what is a job? Job is basically a set of actions and actions are defined as steps. And these jobs, um, they um, basically they, are, uh, they execute those steps. And just keep in mind, they all these steps execute within whatever steps there are in a single job, they are executed on a single runner, okay? So what is a runner? That's, uh, if you are familiar with Azure DevOps, this is your host, okay? Uh, ADO uh, kind of, uh, that's your server where your execution happens. And there are two type of hosts, you can have a runner, that is, you can use GitHub Runner, which provides you Linux, Windows, and Mac OS runners, or you can host a runner on-prem and run your workflows over there. Okay. So both of these things are a possibility. Okay, coming down towards steps. Steps are basically, okay, what is a particular step? What is happening? Um, um, you know, this is basically, uh, now we are talking about execution steps one by one and actions are nothing but um, the command. So a step can be, um, you know, uh, it is using a certain thing and we will take a look at an example and an action can be executing a certain command. So a step can be uh, use Node.js, okay, and execute, uh, the action will be install Node.js. So basically, it will one will make sure that you have a certain version of Node.js downloaded. The other one will make sure that it install uh, npm install runs so your repository 
uh, can kind of, uh, you know, all the uh, dependencies are installed. So this is one example of a workflow, very simple. Syntax is very simple, it's all YAML. So you have the name, which is can be anything. Um, second one is on, on mean, this is what is, this is the event, what event will trigger this workflow. So it's a push. Then you have the jobs, which is different workflow. And by the way, I only have one job here. You can have multiple jobs by default. Just keep in mind by default, if you have multiple jobs, they will all execute in parallel. If you want sequential execution, what you will have to do is you have to make sure that you run those jobs um, in, uh, you know, you run those jobs in parallel. Uh, uh, you, you have to run them sequentially uh, just to make sure. Otherwise, by default, those jobs will run in parallel. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so let's, uh, let's quickly move on. Yeah, and hey, Navid, uh, quick question here. Yes, please. Um, so when we have, want to run the multiple jobs, uh, uh, are we going to add a job uh, to the YAML here, or is it uh, uh, steps we we add another steps and then under that we use users? What is the syntax? X, X, uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Basically, what you do is you add another job. So what you do here is you basically um, you know, copy this code and add another job. So basically one job is this one. The second job is going to be the other, uh, you know, maybe check bats version two or something. So if you just add step, they will be part of the same job. OK, uh, what I'm missing here is the word job under jobs. Uh, so that's why uh, I, I was questioning that. Uh, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, you know, that's kind of as part um, GitHub action syntax and, you know, so yeah. that's that's what it is. No, no, get, get, get. Thank you. OK, so that's pretty simple. I mean, very simple. Of course, uh, there is much more to it if you want to go for more complex executions and all. So now here comes Azure flavor on top of it. So what? Um, what that allows us to do is you have GitHub Actions. So what Azure is now doing, your code is in GitHub, okay? You have your, I mean, you know, this is all about Microsoft meeting the developers where they are. Your code is in GitHub, so why not provide you the ability to deploy directly from GitHub? Why don't, why you want to get out from there, you know? You can just run your code and just deploy it from where you are using the native capability. And native capability here is GitHub Actions. So we are providing, Microsoft is providing a number of um, actions in the GitHub Action Marketplace, which allows you to deploy artifacts to Azure, like App Service, like to AKS, you know, um, like to uh, functions, so all of these things are available there. What you only need is a GitHub account and an Azure subscription, and that's it. You can basically go from there. You can just take those actions and you can just start um, kind of, you know, deploying right there uh, from uh, GitHub Actions. Okay, so let's take a look at a quick demo instead of me, uh, you know, I'm kind of uh, babbling around this. So let's uh, go to github.com. Okay, so these are my repository. Uh, let's look at all my repositories here. I already have it here. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. And there was one that I was looking for. Yes, that's the one. 
Okay, so this is a new repository that I have added. Very simple. It only had a simple Node.js web application. That's all. There is nothing to it. And um, what I'm going to do is I want to add. I want to make it deploy to Azure. So first thing I'm going to do is go to Actions, and there are options here. Either I can set up a workflow for myself, or I can look at any of these um you know any of these uh available things do you want to deploy to ecs do you want to deploy to gke do you want to deploy to azure web app okay for just for the sake of simplicity let's just create a workflow by ourselves i just want to show you the marketplace and all so let's uh, let's do that so if we do it's gonna say main.yaml once again it created a um it created basically a skeleton workflow for us, you know, or what? Yeah, and basically there's a name. You can change it. You can say uh, deploy node JS web. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. Deploy node JS web. Uh, that's what it is. And then on, we can say it is for push. And I can remove all of that just to kind of simplify the syntax. And then this is the jobs. And by the way, uh, the first job, uh, this is the name of the job build. OK, so what I can um, do is I am doing it in uh, one step. So I'm just going to say uh, build. And. Deploy. OK, runs on. Yes, it's running. It's going to run on Linux. And then these are the steps. So uses, action, checkout, uh, um, you know, um, code checkout. So this is basically is gonna just think of it. If you are doing it manually, how you will do it? You will say check out uh, your code. That's gonna be the first step. And then um, there are other steps, but which are not relevant to our project. They are just template steps. So we are gonna remove that. And then what we are going to do is we're going to add another step here and we're going to say. Uses so what we need is we need a node.js environment to set up. So let's look at node.js. The first one is node.js environment and what it needs uses node.js so we can just. Uh, copy this code and just paste it here and go from there. And by the way, this editor is, um, I mean, which is built in into Node.js. It's not that um, kind of fancy. So what it will do is it will doesn't um, format your code properly. We will take a look at uh, Visual Studio code as well in a second. And one of the extensions there. So let's say I've said 12.x. And the next thing is um, uh, I'm going to do. run and by the way if you do this supports intellisense as well so i can say run npm install that's the that's another step and then what i'm going to do is once i have build this check out that code install node.js build it now i want to deploy it so how i will deploy it let's go back to the marketplace this is the marketplace and you see a number of things there some of the things are showing up let's search let's do a web app and the first thing that comes up is azure web app so what we're going to do is we are going to take this code out from here and we are going to paste this code here. Once again, a little bit of uh, formatting needed, so let's go in here and. OK, so app name is let's say what was the app name that I'm using? Okay, this is my app name. This is the app name I'm deploying. 
for and publish profile. Okay, this is important. So what's going to happen is it's going to ask for your publisher profile and you have to save it as a secret in um, in your app. So um, if you are familiar with GitHub, GitHub in the settings. So let's open it here. Open link in a new tab. So it's going to show you all the settings. It show you all the secret. What we're going to do, we're going to create a new secret here. And uh, let's uh, let's create a new secret. I'm going to call it uh, publish profile and uh, let's copy its value from here. Yeah. Paste it. And let's save this setting. OK, so this secret is added. So now I'm going to use that secret in um in my github action so put simply i'm just gonna say oh okay i think i have it um the syntax is like this okay okay what's going on okay. basically that's what it is put simply we are uh, running it on Ubuntu, we are uh, triggering it based on um, a push of the code. And what we are doing is we are doing the npm install. It, it's an Azure web uh, name of the web app is. Uh, let's change the name here. I think. The name, yeah, so this is basically Azure web app um, extension. And then uh, we are going to this is going to deploy the Azure Web App into um, into our Azure environment. So let me just double check it. Yes. And by the way, you don't have to give this name. We can remove this name here. This is just the name of the step. That's all it is to it. OK, so let's um, start the commit. Let's see what happens. Any questions in the meantime? Okay. So what will happen is once you start the commit, let's go back to actions and uh, let's click here on the workflow and let's click on this one. It's a build and deploy one queue job, so it will show you your job here as it is running. Okay, so it has started the job started from repository. Um, all the steps are showing up. So let's uh, let it deploy. It has successfully deployed. Everything is should be running. Com its job has completed. So let's uh, let's go to the website. So this is the website, and if we browse it, this is what it says: "Hello World One." So let's uh, just to test it out. Let's go to our. Uh, sorry, this is not the website here. Uh, so this is basically um, this is what the website says: "Hello World One." Point is, we just ran the script. It, uh, you know, uh, in one place, GitHub, where our code is, that's where our deployment script is, and we were able to deploy the code. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So, so I just read the uh, just. Uh, I think all the access that is required to deploy is uh, getting it from the published uh, profile, correct? That is absolutely right, yes. Yeah. You don't so need anything that, else. Yeah, so I think uh, it, this works great for uh, app service, but is it the same thing for all other services as well? No, every service is different. This is, a, I'm just showing app service. You can have another thing is Azure logon, or okay. you can have service principle secret. So all of um, these things are there. I'm just showing, you know, to be honest, simple. The yeah, 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 no, no, that's option. good. <laughs> just, but just there one. are other options as well. Anything, oh, once you store in the secret, then you can start going, you know, uh, towards it. So definitely you can uh, do with other stuff as well. OK, so that's that's the side of um, if you're doing it in GitHub normally, 
most people um, use Visual Studio Code. So in that case, same thing. You can build your extension here and then you can push the code out and it will have the same effect. So basically it's same thing. I am using an extension called GitHub Actions. Okay, and this is the uh, extension and the interesting part is this extension shows you all, uh, like how your deployments are going and how your code is being deployed and how um, you know uh, what is the result. So for example, let's say we make a change in the code now and I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the uh, change it to. Uh, I'm just going to save it and I'm going to make this push from here. So from here. OK, and let's say we push it. So this is and by the way, just keep in mind, this is not a Microsoft GitHub extension. This is from a third party. So buyer beware. I mean, take a look. If you find another extension that is more useful, you can use it. But this is the extension. So if I refresh it, it should show me now that there is a push happen and if I click on it, it will show me that this. Deployment that's going on. You see what I'm saying? So uh, quite useful. I mean, uh, you can do everything from Visual Studio code. Nothing else because just keep in mind. All your workflow is it's a workflows directory and under that a YAML file. OK, so that's all there is to it. So let's see what happens. Uh, so let's go here and let's refresh the page. OK, so that's changed. OK, so let's quickly go back to our. Um, slides, what are the difference between Azure Pipeline and a GitHub action? One thing is if you are familiar with Azure Pipeline, there's a pipeline which allows you to do kind of a GUI based editor. OK. That is not there is nothing GUI based with GitHub Actions. Everything is through YAML. OK. Um, in the case of GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions, you have to define everything in a workflow file. I mean, you you can't like like I mean, if you're doing like one large workflow in some cases in um, you know DevOps, if you have a single job, you don't have to you know, you only have to define its steps and that's all in the case of uh, DevOps, but that I mean GitHub actions are not that forgiving. OK. Azure DevOps supports stages, so basically you can have one workflow, but there is first um, deploy to um, maybe UAT, wait for the result, then it will go to sleep once everybody tested, somebody check some boxes, then it will deploy to um, staging and then deploy to production. In the case of GitHub Actions, there will be separate workflows. Just keep that in mind. Okay. And one interesting part that I see is agent selection. In the case of GitHub Action, you explicitly say, okay, this is my agent, you know, Ubuntu, whatever, um, and or if you have a want to have a custom agent. In the case of uh, Ubuntu or Mac OS or Windows, but in the case of Azure DevOps, you talk about you know capabilities that this is my this is these are the capabilities that I need, and then it will hand you over a um, you know it will hand you over the a particular agent. OK, so you can you can have a set of capabilities for a particular agent and Azure DevOps will give you that agent like I need dot net frame a dot net core blah 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 and it will hand you that agent. In this case, it is a particular label that you use and that's how you will get that particular agent. So these are some of the differences. Once again, uh, both have their um, you know kind of a strong points. I will say Take a look at it. Whatever works best for you and your organization, make a choice. Oh, 
one i think there is one question where i downloaded the published profile so if i go to the web app in the overview this is get published profile and folks i will give you a heads up on that if you download the published profile um it's sometime okay so i'm going to download it let me refresh it website and download the published profile and let's open it you see this publish url you have to change it to the scm site url which would be this so that is one change you will have to make otherwise this thing will not work so it would be this dot scm dot azure websites dot net okay so that change you will have to make before you can use it and by the way you can take a screenshot of it whatever anyways i'm going to delete that website so there is you know hinky pinky going on okay um that's a great uh, <laughs> tip <laughs> i mean that's really good thank you okay. any other questions we are we have three minutes so navid do, do you know any uh, plans uh, for a uh, you know ui is buggy as you said that is for sure especially for folks uh, who really uh, specialize in azure devops they find it difficult to do things in azure github actions um, so are there any roadmap thing that we are to make it easier transition from azure devops to github actions yeah i mean here's the thing if you are yaml um with azure devops then i think the transition would be very smooth because both have yaml i mean and they right. are yeah. construct very similar if you are using the classic editor and i mean yeah that will be some uh, getting used to you know uh, because uh, yeah. to be honest with the classic editor versus yaml i mean that's where there would be some getting used to and you know <laughs> i would say probably a better transition would be go to the yaml pipelines and then if you want to jump to github actions but once again i mean it shouldn't be that one is uh, cool or not it should be okay what serve my purpose or excuse me my customer's purpose that should be the goal and as i said yeah. the goal is to meet the customers where they are if they are using github and they are using all the facilities provided by github so why not meet them there and meet their needs um you know uh, you know instead of forcing them to use something uh, that you know if you are already using github actions for different things why not use get uh, github actions for devops as well okay. yeah yeah totally makes sense Yeah, I mean, I read the comment. There's a comment saying that, you know, DevOps become a second class citizen. I mean, um, once again, as I said, both have their strengths. And I think one or the other, in the end, you will have to make a decision which fits best for your needs. So, okay. Folks, any other questions, comments, feedback? You're right on time. Okay. Thank you very much, and I hope everybody had a uh, great weekend and see you next week for another session of Azure Power Lunch. Great session, Navid. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.